What's up, guys? Yo, holy crap, another year, another DEF CON. And you know what? It's another DNS talk. Damn straight, I got a drink. So, um, man, can't say I really knew what I was getting myself into with that whole break DNS thing. Uh, but the DNS route is signed and people keep blaming me for it. <laughs> uh, more importantly, it turns out that this whole DNS sec root signing, I got a level with you guys. I pretty much was convinced any kind of DNS sec stuff was way too much work for uh, pretty much no benefit whatsoever. Uh, no, it's actually kind of awesome. And this talk is about why. Let me show you something kind of cool. Uh, by any chance, was anyone in this room at like my way, way back in the day SSH talk? Yes. You guys are the old school. So check it out. Um, it's not like I ever stopped playing with SSH. It's a really common thing when you're managing networks, like in the real world, you're often managing some customer's network. So here's me trying to log into, you know, root at somecustomer.org. And what does it do? It asks me for a password. Oh man, I gotta like find this customer's password, call them up, notepad. Wouldn't it be great if I could just say, look, dude, I'm Dan at remotesport.org. I'm trying to log into you, root at somecustomer.org. Yeah, it's multiple organizations. Yeah, it's federation. Yeah, it's something we as a security community have been trying to build for a decade. Oh, wait, that just worked. Yes. And what did I have to do server side? Hey server, you, you allow Dan at remotesupport.org. Done. DNSSEC is a lot more interesting than I gave it credit for. We've been trying to do authentication and federation across domain boundaries for years. And with DNSSEC, with the root signed, we implemented it in about four hours. This is kind of cool. We basically coined something called DKI, the Domain Key Infrastructure. It's basically PKI, but this time it actually works. <laughs> we can't do DKI, we can't do DNSSEC if it is in fact, as some people have been saying, oh my God, this is gonna be a horrible pain to deploy. It's gonna take hundreds of thousands of hours and hundreds or millions of dollars. We can't do what I just did if it's gonna cost that much but I get ahead of myself. There are four audiences for this talk, four groups that I think are in here. The user, the buyer, the builder, and the breaker. If you are a user, if you are someone who just wants your computer to work right and you're here because you're interested in what that means, I think the entire security community owes you an apology. We have been promising so many things for so many years when you receive an email from the bank, maybe it's just me, maybe you should actually know it came from the bank. Telnetting into port 25 still works, this sucks. So I apologize, we failed you. We ask you too many questions, we make too many demands upon your memory, and we blame you. We, I was in a session earlier today where all I heard about was how users require education, as if it was their fault. No. We have failed to give you what you need. And it's not because we're lazy or stupid. It's because we haven't had the foundational tools required to deliver a more secure experience. If you are a buyer, and don't be offended if you're not a buyer for the market terms, but let me give you the bottom line. Budgets are gonna go up because this stuff actually works. 10 years ago, we tried as a community to deploy public key infrastructure. There was a whole bunch of hype about how this technology would finally free us from passwords. It's 10 years later, passwords ain't gone away. Now, our stuff from 10 years ago did not work, but it's not like we have any less need for strong authentication. Our belief, our hope, is that DNSSEC through DKI is the way that we're finally going to achieve all the promises of PKI. Now, if you are a builder, if you are someone who makes security products, we are all tired of your crap that doesn't scale. How much stuff have you sold that sits on shelves because it worked in the lab, 
it worked enough for the initial sale. And you ever notice how like six months later, the customer doesn't call you back and talk to you ever again? Yeah, yeah, that's kind of been the story of the last decade, hasn't it? Um, a lot of crappy products have been shipped. A lot of devices have shipped with no authentication whatsoever. A lot of sacrifices have been made. You know, one of the things you find with SSL certificates is the browsers care and everyone else just says, wow, this is hard, I'm gonna turn that off. <laughs> Half of all certificates on the internet don't even pretend to offer security. There's only about a million certs on the net, period. So it's like all the possible internet endpoints were running out of four billion IP addresses. We don't even have a half million secure endpoints. This is a failure. However, it's also an opportunity. It means we can do better. But the most important group here, and I think actually the majority of the people here, are breakers. You know, most people in technology believe code is secure until proven otherwise. Yeah, uh, you all know better. <laughs> uh, by default, software is pretty much generally going to be broken. Um, you're the community that looked at my demo earlier and said, did he just make DNSSEC pre-auth in OpenSSH? Is Dan crazy? Thank you for noticing. I think it's time we get some work done. There's about to be some huge bets put on DNSSEC. And I'm going to level with you. I don't want to wait 25 years for the next DNS bug. So you know what? We're actually pushing a, a radical transparency model. Uh, started a company called Recursion Ventures. We're actually playing in this space. Yeah, so we are going to be backing an aggressive and public and open audit of all DNSSEC and DKI technologies. Um, if you're familiar with Justin Ferguson, uh, he is one of the probably top five code auditors that I've ever met in my career. He is auditing LDNS, which is the best DNSSEC library on the planet. We are releasing the pen test report publicly. And not someday in the distant future, we are releasing it September 1st, 2010. This should be an excellent starting point for anyone else who wants to bash either DNSSEC or the LDNS library in particular. The authors of the library, NLNet Labs, are fully on board. We, there may very well be a problem found in DNSSEC, but we're not gonna guess, we're not gonna hope, we're gonna bash on it until we're happy. Now some ground rules to doing some DNSSEC work. Uh, we don't care about not invented here. We can't have religion, we can't afford it. Um, we have an internet fix. That means we have a problem that's bigger than any one person, any one organization, any one community, or any one country. We don't care about style. Skype's law is basically, you know what? We security people really bungled up the internet in 2001. We kind of froze it in time. You get HTTP and you get HTTPS. And deal with it. I like elegance, I like theory, but I like stuff that actually works. Not just barely. Systems that barely work are barely deployed. Now there's a corollary. We can't care about historical precedent. You know why? Because it's not like it's actually been working particularly well. We're gonna have to do things differently. Or you know we can just keep failing for the next 15 years. We do care about operations. We do care about that IT guy that actually has to wake up at three in the morning if this stuff fails. We are not gonna secure the internet by calling people lazy or stupid. To be fair, that does define us as intelligent and industrious. <laughs> Great for our egos, crappy for the internet. We are not gonna win through moralization. You don't wag your finger at someone and think it's gonna change anything. You're really not gonna win through regulation because let me tell you, uh, without naming names, I've seen a lot of certifications and I've seen a lot of compliance programs and I haven't seen a lot of competence in any of them. We're gonna win this, we're gonna win this the old fashioned way. We are going to deliver a better product that works better, works cheaper, works faster, works easier. This it is not like the status quo of security is exactly inexpensive. There is better that can be done by actual genuine people wanna run it. What if it's not, what if you don't think of security as something you bash people over the head with? What if you think of security as Man, this is actually kind of awesome. 
That is the goal of this talk, to show you DNSSEC for all the hype, wait a second, I can build something with this. So some timelines, 18 months ago, everyone pretty much knew all of DNSSEC was crap from an implementation side. But 18 months ago, we basically said, okay, yes, it's crap, but this protocol that's gone through ITF for 15 years is actually not bad. It can be done safely, securely, easily. Well, we live in the future. We look at what we have, and not just what the work we're doing, we have three open source servers that are pretty good. We have three commercial servers that are pretty good, and pretty much any company in DNS is basically saying, man, don't worry about it at all. Just uh, tell us what you want and we'll do it for you. This is good. From a market perspective, this means lots of people are in this space. This is a stable technology. I'm just here to tell y'all, they can do what they're doing. This is where it's going. So first off, let me explain DNS tech to you. It's not actually that complicated. In normal DNS, you ask a question, you get an answer. Or you ask a question, you get a referral. So you ask Alice, you know, hey, what's Jenny's number? And he says, I'll ask Travis. Travis says, you know, go to Travis. Hey, Travis, what's Jenny's number? He says, ask Charlie. He asks Charlie and get apparently the wrong number for Jenny. What is Jenny's actual number? She keeps giving me the wrong one. <laughs> so with DNSSEC, it's really quite similar. You ask a question, you get an answer and a signature. Or you ask a question, get a referral, and a signature. Now, is it really that simple? Mostly. Referrals now contain new keys. Before, you were just told where Travis was. You know, oh, you know, go ask Travis. He's down by the water fountain. Now you're told how to recognize him. Oh yeah, he's the skinny white dude in dreadlocks, who's you know, now the new chief hardware officer of Recursion Ventures. So welcome, Travis Goodspeed. Um, Computers can make stronger identifiers than people can, uh, so we use cryptography. Uh, but it's just the same. You know, everyone always says, I don't understand public key cryptography. Look, it's really easy to recognize a face. It's really hard to smash your face to look like someone. That's asymmetric public key cryptography. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Is that it? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, there's some magic here and there with, you know, Jenny has no number. Lies. Uh, <laughs> records can expire and keys can lead to other keys. But uh, a lot of the magic is optional, more than you'd think. And all of the magic can be implemented in an easily deployable manner. Now, yes, the easiest thing to do is to call up some managed service provider and just say, hey, go do it. But, you know, failing that, I have heard estimates that deploying DNSSEC could take a hundred hours of consultant time per domain. Let me show you how we would, I'm okay, I'm not doing a live demo in the middle of DEF CON. Hook up to this network, are you joking? <laughs> but this is what it would look, this, you're just gonna have to believe me, this is DNSSEC made so easy to deploy, you could do it on stage at a conference. So, First thing that we have, and I apologize that the text is small, first thing we have is your standard little name server. It's got, you know, 10 or 11 domains. You know, they're very small and whatnot, very simple, kind of thing anyone might have. Okay. Step one, change the port on the DNS server from 53 to 50,053. Step two, launch Freebird, the Recursion Ventures DNSSEC server. Note the lack of options or configurations or anything. You just run it. Step three, there is no step three. You're done. <laughs> you know, once upon a time, name, once upon a time, web servers were very simple things. They ran static documents, you had a file system, everything you wanted to do, it had to be through there. And if you wanted to do anything dynamic, okay, you ran processes with CGI. You know what? Web services evolved, so are name servers. This thing goes ahead, it dynamically generates the signature, it'll dynamically generate the key material. Now we're not entirely done, we do need to go ahead and tell, in this case, .org, hey, we actually exist, this is where we are. So this is how it looks. You go to go, yeah, let me talk about something else I'm not doing from DEF CON. 